Hello guys, Winston here. Apollo over at Carbide3D recently sent me a care package so I could try my hand at making some of the spinner ornaments he's been showing off on his Instagram. Given the relative lack of holiday-themed projects coming through my workshop, I thought it would be a fun challenge to take on. Apollo provided a good deal of documentation about his process over on the Carbide3D forums, but to summarize what he did, starting from some sheets of 1 8 inch acrylic, Apollo cut out two opposing shapes and then bolted them together with one of the two pieces seated on a 7mm OD bearing. He provided all of the drawings and even carbide create files in the forum, so the hardest part was basically already done for me. I decided to run this project on my Nomad since the lower RPM spindle makes cutting plastic a lot simpler. It reduces the chances of melting the plastic from friction. That, and I didn't want to annoy my roommates by running the Makita late at night. Once everything was cut out, I pulled the pieces off my MDF wasteboard and put together the ornament. Everything fit together nicely, and it did indeed spin smoothly. I hung it up on my townhouse's generously sized Christmas tree and called it a day. And that's all I have for this week. Ha, just kidding. It felt super lame to just copy what Apollo had made. I wanted to put my own twist on the project, and as a mechanical engineer by training, the use of gears as a visual theme seemed appropriate. Now, my biggest problem with cutting out gears is usually sourcing the drawings for them. I've manually modeled involute gear teeth in CAD before, and it's a little annoying. There are gear generators online, but I wanted specifically to make a planetary gear set. Sizing my gears manually would be tedious at best, so I looked for gear sets that were already made. You could do this in Google Image Search, but there's no guarantee that what you find will actually be functional or machinable. A better place to look is Thingiverse. This is a gear set I found, and the best part is, the original creator mentioned that they'd cut it on a CNC with a 1 8 inch end mill. This meant that I could scale it down by at least a factor of 2 and still cut it out with a 1 16 inch end mill. I took the DXF components and moved them into Inkscape. Then, I added 7mm holes in each gear for a bearing, and centered the ring gear within one of the original ornament profiles from Apollo. I didn't want to cut all the way through the ring gear though, because I wanted a small lip within the ring gear that would keep the planet gears from falling out. The idea was that I'd have two frame halves that would sandwich the planet and sun gears. After taping down my plastic sheets, I cut out my pieces. I spread this out over a few jobs so I'd have a chance to make corrections in between if anything didn't work out. In a fortunate turn of events, I was able to get all of my planet gears to be a tight press fit for Apollo's 7mm bearings. This simplified my assembly later. At this stage, I dropped all of my gears into the ring gear to make sure that everything would fit. So far, so good. I measured out the hole-to-hole -hole spacing of my planet gears and found that they were rectangular and not square. I kind of expected this since the ring gear had 46 teeth, which isn't really a nice number to try and divide by 4. In Fusion 360, I sketched out a very basic X-shaped planetary carrier and sent that through MakerCam. The through holes were sized at 4mm to allow my 3mm hardware a little bit of wiggle room. I cut this out at something like 10pm and thankfully I didn't get any complaints from my roommates. Sometimes when I get close to finishing a project, I get tunnel vision and I can't put it down. After assembling my inner gears on the planetary carrier and thread locking the nuts on loosely so the bearings and axles were free to move, I dropped it into my ring gear. Everything still worked, so I snapped on the other half of the ornament frame, clamped them together, and match drilled a 564 inch hole through both halves. On the clear half, I went in and opened up the hole to 332 of an inch. The sizing of the holes meant that I could basically self tap a number 2 socket head screw into the red frame, while the clear frame was free to move. It's best to avoid having multiple layers of something tapped because screws will have a self centering effect on the holes. If you've ever tried to drive a screw through two sheets of wood that weren't tightly clamped together, you might notice that once a gap has formed, you'll never be able to squeeze them together again. Anyways, once my ornament was put together, I verified that everything still moved, and it did, which was an enormous relief. And that, my friends, is a Christmas ornament fit for an engineer. Thank you all very much for watching, have a very Merry Christmas, and maybe I'll see you next week.